my name is Alana, and I um, I am a champion of, of CASA, I feel like. Um, so I became involved with CASA, C-A-S-A, -A, which stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. So we are appointed by a judge to a specific child to advocate in the court for them. So what that means is when a child is removed from a home because of suspected abuse or neglect, they go into the foster care system. And as you may or may not have heard, there's a lot of turnover with um, um, CPS workers and that's a hard job to endure. And so sometimes um, turnover it happens. And so the children have to get used to new grownups all the time. And so really, for me, what besides being that voice, that is the consistency. So oftentimes, like with the cases I have right now, I've had for over two years. So I'm that one consistent person that gets to know all the pieces and all the players, no special background required, just a heart for kids, and you gather all this information and then you offer an opinion to the judge about what is in the best interest of the child. Right. So advocate, not a specialist, right. not a psychiatrist, right. <laughs> not a teacher, not a, um, I don't have any, I'm a journalist by um, education, so um, it's really being able to to gather all this information and then offer an opinion that I that I believe that the judges weigh pretty heavily because really um, we have nothing to gain and we're the only person in the courtroom that's not paid. Mm -hmm. And that we offer this non-clinical but really valuable opinion because we're not hired by anybody and we get all the pieces. I mean, I, I interview everybody from the schools to the grandparents to the siblings to the you know, the biological parents and, you know, of course, the CPS workers and the therapists, but just gather all that and then offer an opinion to the best interests of the child, not the biological parents, not the foster parents, not the state. We're independent, we're attached to nobody, and we advocate only for what we feel is in the best interest of the child. What I love and hate is that sometimes we stand alone. Sometimes we don't agree with what the state wants to do, and so we have to stand alone and, and agree amicably and offer that opinion. Lots of times it's we do agree, but I've disagreed with them a lot and it's mm. hard to stand alone, but it's only my opinion, which is not a professional clinical opinion. All ages, so children, you know, the younger they are, the more immediate the need is if they're in danger. You know, a 12-year-old can fix a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. A, a six-month-old cannot, so the the urgency increases the younger the child is, but we work with all ages um, and sometimes siblings. So my very first case, there was three kids and when I got the case, they were four, five, and six. And by the time all three were adopted to three different homes, living in Helena and all thriving well, it's probably three years later. So it you commit to it and you can say no. And that, that's pretty important to know too that once your training is complete, they call you and they tell you the background about the case and you can make the choice whether your life is in a place where you can endure the extra hours or it triggers some kind of bad memory for yourself or you can say no and that's pretty important to be able to do. It's up to you. So if I, if I were a retired person with more time, I would probably have you know, three or four. Um, right now I have two. Um, but I'm also on the board, so I would not take any more on. And the, and the commitment varies. So maybe um, one week I spend only an hour on the phone with the teacher and an hour in a meeting, and that's it. Maybe the next week, though, I'm in court for four hours, and so I don't have to sit there the whole time, but I have to be probably available and offer a report beforehand. So on average, I would say I spend about 15 hours a month um, doing volunteer work for as an advocate. So we get money from the district court and the Supreme Court, so they give us some money. We get some TANF money. It's a program through the department because so many of our families are on um, public assistance. Um, and actually, when you get into foster care, you automatically, as a child, would qualify for some public assistance because we wouldn't want to task that to our foster families. Um, so most of the money, and then we get money from United Way. We're a United Way program, so that's great. Um, the Lewis and Clark County gives us some money every year. We're very grateful for that. Um, and then we have an annual fundraiser, um, always in April, that is the Light of Hope Banquet, and you could um, volunteer as a to help with that or donate a basket or 
come sing for us for it. Um, whatever your talent is, you know, we can utilize it. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be advocating because it's not for everybody. So training is about 40 hours for, oh, an for an advocate. And they do that usually at night over the course of a couple weeks. And you can decide after that, look, this, it, it's going to be too hard on my heart. I'm not going to be able to, the, the secondary trauma will be too much for me. And so you can recognize that and find, we'll find a different way for you to help out if, if you know, you feel for the program. But every year in April, because that's um, Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Month, we have an annual fundraiser that generates a large portion of our, of our budget. So this is the My Bag program, um, which is often very popular at our, at our fundraiser. And so when children are removed, especially if it's um, a drug-related case where, where methamphetamines has been involved, the children can take nothing. They can take no blankets, no toys, no stuffed animals. I mean, they, they nothing. And so when a CPS worker takes them to a new um, foster home, you know, often they have things for them there, but they don't really necessarily feel like they're things. So this My Bag program is a way that people could financially support. Um, for $40, this bag is provided to every child that is put into foster care. And so the CPS worker um, provides that to them. So it's, it's comfort items. So there's a note from us, and then there's a blanket, you know, because it's soft and everybody loves a blanket. Probably. That's right. And there's usually some hygiene things. So here's um, like a, some underwear, and here's some, a brush, and here's some shorts and socks. And it looks like here's a sippy cup. Cool. So things that, you know, th they know that when they get this, this is theirs because, and it's not the same. I mean, it's, it's great and it's something and it makes us feel good, but, it's but it's still not the same as their stuff that they've left behind. And so I just want to acknowledge that while we're doing this from a, from a therapy, which I'm not, but from a therapy pr perspective, this still doesn't make them feel like they are taking home with them. They're leaving it behind. So forty dollars pays for this, and lots of people. That's a that's a you know it's not a it's not a lot of money. It's you know you can eat uh, for a week buying groceries with forty dollars, but you know it's not a huge commitment, and it's a one time commitment. And so lots of this is pretty um, a popular way to donate um, money. So the also when you donate, if it's not this, we only have two FTEs. So there's only two people that run the program for all these volunteers. Everybody else is volunteers. So that's pretty incredible considering yeah. all the children that we serve. So the total um, 232 children in care right now in 73 um, CASA volunteers. So, um, and that number has increased about 30% average for the last three years. That means that there's 30% more children living in foster care in our backyards than there was last year. We really could use more. We can't keep up. There's children right now that come into the system that we, we can't provide a volunteer to that's never happened before since the program started um, we've always been able to attach a volunteer to a child and right now there's just so many that there are some that, that don't have advocates and that's pretty unfortunate mm -hmm.